Ladies, this is the number one quality that you must have if you want a great man. You can get a great man, a good man, or a bad man. If you want a great man, the best of men, this is the number one quality that the man is looking for. I'm going to explain to you how you execute on that quality on a consistent basis. Pay attention, probably take some notes, and more importantly, take action on these notes. Let me know when we hit eight minutes. So number one, this trait is being competent and hardworking. Competent. Do you want a man who's a good provider? Well, it turns out perhaps you might want to help him or rather support him in being a good provider. So when we say competent, that means that you're given a task one time. You should make sure you're listening attentively and seek understanding. At the point in which the task is presented to you, be happy to take it, listen closely, and ask questions to truly understand what the deliverable must be. This is important because at the end, the deadline, when it's time to deliver, at that point, if you're not delivering what was asked for, your explanation doesn't matter, your excuse doesn't matter, the context doesn't matter, the circumstance doesn't matter, your questions at that time don't matter. A man is looking for the outcome, a boss is looking for the outcome, a great man is looking for the outcome, not for, a, for an explanation or a story or an excuse. Now, you might be saying, Marquette, my man is not my boss, he's not my employer. Ah, you'd be wrong there. Actually, he is your boss. And I would go farther to say that not only is he your boss, you should treat him better than your boss because your boss will not exchange his life for yours. He would not give up his life to protect your life. So your man is much greater than your boss. When your man is speaking, listen closely, be attentive and show that you're attentive. That makes him feel good. When people listen closely, it makes the speaker feel as though they're important. And certainly every man wants to feel important, whether he's an executive or a janitor. So that's number one. Be competent. Understand that from an identity standpoint, what would help you as a woman is knowing that you should view yourself as I'm his best employee. I am his best employee. I'm his assistant. You are the assistant to your man. Now, you might ask, well, if I'm his employee, Marquette, what's my compensation? Well, your compensation is him being a provider and a protector. Yes, the finances that he expends on you, on having a roof over your head or, you know, providing you with meals and dates and all of these things, they all cost. And then also you being protected and cared for. That is your compensation. So your identity, I'm his best employee. You're the assistant to the man. You're earning his protection and his provisions that he provides to you. Earning it, I know, I know. Who likes to earn things nowadays? As I said, competence. When you display competence to that man, he only has to ask you for something once. You're happy to embrace the task. You listen closely, you ask questions to understand the task, you make sure that you're ready to deliver the, the goods on deadline with no excuses. Bosses don't like to hear excuses. So always seek understanding early because there will be no understanding at the point of deadline. Here's another critical piece, and this is against female nature, so that's why I'm teaching you this particular aspect of competence. If a man passes off a task to you, he's not looking to collaborate with you on the task. It's been passed off to you, meaning you need to do it independent of him. Maybe you might collaborate with some other folks. You might collaborate with your girlfriend or something like that, but you don't require his time. That's why he gave it to you. So know that you're doing it independently unless otherwise indicated. Another point. When you're doing something for your man, the comp, he'll understand you to be a competent woman. 
based on you doing what he asked you to do. There's nothing wrong with being intelligent. There's nothing wrong with getting creative. But remember, his pleasure in seeing what you've done is the pleasure of you doing what he asked you to do, not something almost what he asked you to do. For example, I don't take ice in my water. Often, uh, if I take a meal with a woman, I will. she might order before I get there or she'll order because I might be working at the table. And if my, I remember one time my water arrived and it had ice in it, two different women. Uh, the competent woman, she told the waiter, excuse me, I asked for no ice in this water. Would you be kind enough to bring over a glass of water with no ice? He said, yeah, sure thing, no problem. Another woman, the water was brought over with ice. And then when I looked at the water, water and then I looked at her and she says, oh, well, he, he, I told him, I for sure told him, but you know, he, he brought it with ice. You know, it's all, it's all right. First off, no, it's not all right. You see, now is ice in my water going to ruin my day? No, it's not. But it shows me that you're not competent. The competence doesn't come in you asking them to not put ice. The competence is shown in the delivery, not the effort, but the delivery of the outcome, which is to say, if you said no ice and they brought it with ice, you need to persist and make sure they bring you a glass of water with no ice. And then further, when you say, oh, it's all right. No, it's not all right. Do you want a great man, a good man or a bad man? A great man expects high standards, excellence and outcomes. You want to live up to that. You want to be a great woman to him. You view him as a boss. You view him as a king. Deliver what a king should have. Deliver what a boss should have. If your man doesn't like ice, then there will be no ice. huh? It doesn't even matter if you need to potentially ask him. I told these people three times, no ice. They brought me three different glasses with ice. Do you want to change restaurants? I'm willing to do that to make sure that we can get this right for you. Have that mindset. So remember, it's just like university. I remember I learned a, a trick from my cousin, actually, my cousin, Anthony, uh, my older cousin, Anthony. And he told me, he said, you know, being successful in school is not about taking the course and learning. It's about taking the course and figuring out what the teacher wants you to learn. You see, there's a there's a, a power dynamic. The teacher is in the boss position. You don't learn what you wanted to learn. You learn what he wanted you to learn. And then you spit that out on the test, the examination. So always understand it's not about what you want or what you thought. It's about understanding the task at hand, according to your man, and delivering what he wanted. Eight minutes. So let me summarize for you. We talked about competence, and then we talk about now hard work. These two things come together, which is to say to be competent is to be able to understand the task, complete the task, deliver it on time the way uh, the task giver has dictated. Dictated. You should be okay being dictated to. After all, this is the man you chose. This is the boss you chose. It's a free country. You're not in an arranged marriage. Now, when we're talking about hard working a hard working person goes the extra mile a hard working person is always looking to have high customer satisfaction you want the wow factor you want them to be very impressed you want your man to always feel as though you went the extra mile for him for him and hopefully when you continue to do that for him on a consistent basis this is what makes a great man fall deeply in love with you and cherish you and value you and stay loyal to you and always return to you because you go that extra mile, you are a hardworking woman on his behalf. So keep that in mind when you do the task. Yes, it's good enough to do the task. That's good. But how can we be great every time? How can we take it to a level of excellence every time? How can we exceed expect expectations every time? Hard working. So when you're going to do something that was asked of you, you do it well. You work hard at it. You execute with focus. I can't tell you how many times I've observed a woman. And now, mind you, many intelligent men, wise men, great men, they won't argue with you. These are people of peace. These are 
you know, elevated men. They're not going to argue with you. They see you falling short. They might not even correct you. But what they will do is they'll slide away. They'll ease away from you or they'll marginalize you, turn you into a side girl, turn you into a girl that they only call late at night, turn you into a girl they don't respond to your messages. Because remember, a great man has a lot of options, good options. And men are aging in a different way than women are aging. As a woman, you need to have urgency. This is the number one trait that you must have if you would have a great man. And you should all be looking for a great man.